which is biotechnology, science, business, and society. Today is the webinar number 33. And uh, we have a very special guest today. We have uh, Mrs. Kathy Tan. And uh, she is born in Chua, uh, in Bartex, Negrisi Milan, Malaysia. And uh, we can say simply, she is a natural lover. And uh, she's a specialist in the honey and the apitherapy practitioner. And she graduated from the very famous University of Malaysia, UKM, which is the National University of Malaysia, with a Bachelor of Social Science in Psychology, Geography, and Environment in 1991. Uh, she is a qualified healthier eating advisor under ITEC in UK Nutrition. And she is the managing director of the ECOP Biotechnologies Denver Heart in Kulai, Jor. She is also the vice president of um, she is the vice president of Stingless P Association Malaysia, and she is a council member of the second board of the specialized committee of the apitherapy of the World Federations of the Chinese Medicine Societies from June 2023 until October 2026. She is a permanent committee member of the Honey Bee Standard Malaysia and life member of the Johor SME Association. She is uh, dealing uh, with the Honey Bee business since 2002. And uh, she is personally having, um, I think, story about this. She's going also to tell about her personal loving of, of this uh, type of business. And if you're talking about the company, the EcoP by Technologies Number Heart is established 2002 and dealing with the pure and original stingless bee honey and raw honey, royal jelly, bee proteins, and supercritical fluid extractions of stingless bee uh, and gold propolis, golden propolis. EcoP by Tech have ISO 22000 and HACCP GMB and halal certifications. And uh, we have they have collaborated with many universities like Monash University, UTM, UPM, UTR, and the R&D for development of new products of the company. The strength of, of the company, they awarded also the best top 10 gold award for ICANN 2020 Canada, which is very prestigious award, and the gold award of Innova 2020 from Croatia. And they have also many awards. We are very happy that we have today our speaker, Mrs. Kathy, for giving us a time to share her knowledge with us and with our, all our audience. Thank you very much. Okay, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for Dr. Shyam for the uh, long introductions. Okay, today I wanted to share with you about the quality impact on Popolis, Ecobi Biotech. We have the world first Kalulut Golden Popolis using green technology of SFP. Okay, I just to show you some slide of our bee farm. And okay, this is a stingless bee. Okay, this is a, our collaboration with UTM. We visited some, some of the stingless bee farm, okay, from UTM. All right, so now I'm going to show you a short video on this uh, Popolis, uh, how the manufacturing on the Kululut Golden Popolis. Bees have existed since 100 million years ago. Why can they survive until now? It is because of propolis. What is propolis? Why use propolis? Why use stingless bees? Why not use normal honey bees? Hi, I'm Kathy Tan, founder of Eco Bee Shop Sandel Bahad. Our innovation project on Malaysian golden propolis extract from stingless bee. Stingless bee also known as Kalulut in Malaysia. Stingless bee occur in most tropical and subtropical regions. Malaysia has more than 50 different species of stingless bee. Sting stingless bee produce more propolis than honeybee. Propolis is well known as bee glue, used to protect beehive against invaders and contamination such as bacteria and fungus. It is used to seal holes 
and maintain temperature inside the beehive. Stingless bee product has a long history of traditional indigenous use with a range of therapeutic properties like antioxidant and antidiabetics. Hello, my name is Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Asisi from University of Technology in Asia. Our research team collaborated with ABOB Shop since 2016, starting with your research of property extraction using landscape as a tool. And now, the process has been upscaling to fine landscape extraction using supercritical carbon dioxide extraction. Why we are just this method? This method is recognized as a green extraction method using CO2 as a solvent. Then CO2 is a non perturbable and non toxic as well. The beauty tool of the, this process is the integration of separation and directive occurred simultaneously. In terms of the economics engineering, this method is considered as cost effective process. Yes, okay. The video has shown that our the five years of study collaboration with UTM from the populist, raw populist to the finished products. So, and we have won many awards on this uh, invention. So, let's uh, going to share with you what impact the quality on the uh, populist. Bees exist millions of years. Anthropology research has shown that bees exist millions of years on Earth. Dinosaur has listing, but bees still exist. Why? Why bee can survive until today? Is because they know how to put, protect themselves and heal themselves using propolis. Propolis contain very high antibacterial, anti-inflammation, and antivirus uh, properties. Let's see what is propolis from the video you've seen. Actually, we, propolis is the wax or the raisin that bee collected from the selected plants 
selected plants. This is very important. I say the selected plants, not any plants, but selected plants, which the raisin and the wax contain very high uh, anti bacterial properties so that the bee can use it to protect their hive. You can see from this picture is the bee collected a lot of wax, a lot of raisin and the organic compounds. Uh, I mean, bee, properly is also known as bee group. So because it's collected by the bee, so it can protect the hive. Can we eat uh, this raw propolis? Can we eat? The answer is no. Because we humans are unable to absorb, uh, absorb uh, the raw propolis in directly through our body system. So what is the benefit of propolis? Scientists, scientists have found that propolis is the ingredient the bee used to protect their hive. So it's 100% bacteria free inside the beehive. Why? It's because it contains very high, the content of flavonoid and phenolic compounds, which is the key ingredient, is the key ingredient found in propolis. Research, hundreds of research and thousands of research show the benefit of propolis. What is a propolis benefit? That sum summarizes uh, to all the research. It contains high antioxidant and high anti-inflammatory uh, compound, antibacterial, mm -hmm. antifungus, anti-ulcer, anti-cancer, rich in flavonoid and phenolic acid. No odor and high stability with low wax content. Propolis, in simple way, layman term, we call it natural antibiotic. It's non-toxic, free from heavy metal. Of course, the met to be free from heavy metal, the methods of extraction is the key thing. And it doesn't harm friendly bacteria that inside our body. And it helps to support our body immune system. So this is very, very important. You take something into our body, is that going to be harmful to our body? No, the answer is no. It's going to kill the bad bacteria, but protect the good bacteria. So this is a summary on the research. Basically, we can classify on the 30 big benefits on the populist for health. A, a lot of research has been done, even among all the country all over the world that research on this uh, populist for health benefit. From our head to toes, from the brain, from the beauty, our cell, like anti-tumor, anti-cancer, anti-allergy, anti-inflammation. This is the basic key thing we are talking about. Okay, it's also good for our lungs, okay, and stomach, heart. I mean, that is the one word they call, uh, one name they given to populace, they call it uh, the purple gold. In Chinese, they call it purple gold, zi huang jing, the purple gold. And it have the property able to penetrate in even to our small wind. So that's why it's very, very good for our hearts as well. This is based on study, pancreas for diabetics and skin for those who want to be anti-aging. Uh, that skin uh, for skin is very, very good as well. Intestine and joint pain as well. So this is a research attached. Uh, I mean, for audience, you can go through the research. And if you need us to share, with, share to you, the research paper is available. You can uh, drop a note, then I will share to you. What impact quality of propolis? There is summary to four key points that impact to quality of propolis. Bee species, plants, extraction method, and also the active compound inside the propolis. Let's go through the bee species. Bee species, the propolis they gain from stingless bee, which is very popular in the tropical country, especially in Malaysia. I mean, the stingless bee, everyone known about Kalulut in Malaysia. I mean, I visited many countries and people share, uh, oh, they're interested in Kalulut. What is the difference compared with honeybee? Honeybee, the body size is bigger. The, this uh, stingless bee is smaller size, so they're able to penetrate a small hole and uh, a special tree, special plant, special nectar, special raisin they can collect. And properly, these stingless bees, they got a big, we call it gigi basa. There is a big, uh, they're, they're able to bite stronger compared with 
the honeybee. So that is the thing that contribute to the resin they collected from the plants. The research shown, this is a USM research. You compare Malaysia Kalulu Popolis and Brazil Popolis. The research has proven that the Kalulu Popolis have very high in formonoid content compared with the Brazilian Popolis. And it's water soluble. And this is from the stingless bee like Trigona, Genio Trigona thoracica, and also Trigus, uh, Trigona itama, which they collect the raisin from tree, from the forest, multiflora, and this is proven that the content very high anti antioxidant. Later, I'm going to share with you some uh, analysis using the HPLC. Okay, raisin that collected. Malaysia is in a tropical country. We are in tropical country and we have multiple type of tree, different variants, herb tree in, in Malaysia. So Malaysia is very, very popular in the world because our tropical forest. We have the oldest the tropical forest in the world. So this uh, raising plant selected is selected. This is the key thing. B selected the raising that going to benefit, going to protect their hive. So this is the key thing. What are the raisin they collect? is very important. Not the raisin we pluck from the tree ourselves, but it's selected by the bee. In Malaysia, I mean, we found that uh, Genio Trigona thoracica, they are very fav favor. They favor to mangosteen raisin, which is very high in bioforona and also antioxidant properties. We come to the method of extraction. The quality impact of this uh, a populist also impacted by the method we use. Basically, I mean, yeah, we summarize to five methods that commonly used in the markets. One is the micro, microwave. They use microwave. Of course, this uh, you incur the high heat and you're going to affect the formula content. And then the ultrasound. Ultrasound also using ethanol. And then again, it apply heat as well. And this alcohol extract is the most common one. It's a very, very common, but our challenge in Malaysia is, is not halal. And it also extract a lot of uh, impurity as well. So this is the key thing. And water extract, also a lot of researchers try to use the water extract. But the thing is, because propolis contain a lot of polar compound, and this going is unable to extract the full compound. The best we have finest it lies it is supercritical fruit extraction with using CO2. It's safe, fast, heavy, uh, heavy metal free, and then wax free. So this is a very, very special technology that we uh, use to ensure the purity of the propolis. Active compound inside the propolis, which mainly is for one night content. It depends on type of formonoid content inside the propolis. Of course, they include a lot uh, like camphorol, quercetin, gadolinium, phenosamines, and so many more type of uh, compound, the active compound inside the propolis. This is the four key point control going to contribute to the imp to impact the propolis quality. And research shown that propolis able to help the C uh, COVID nineteen. This is a, a research, you can refer to the research note that I put uh, under it. Okay, it found that this uh, camphoro is one of the active uh, compound, bioflavonoid play a very, very important role to fighting with uh, COVID-19 virus. So this is uh, one of the compound also available in Kalulut Populis. This is uh, our Malaysian, okay. This is this uh, SFE machine, which is green tech, low, tempera low temperature, as I mentioned, heavy metal free, no residual, and is 100% pure. You're able to remove all the wax. The key thing that we're going to emphasize here is the formonoid, total formonoid extract and the antioxidant amount. For a good quality of propolis, you need to go through this style of analysis. How about the world standard? Actually, in propolis, now that 
Many countries try to come up with a standard. But Malaysia, we haven't set a standard yet. Okay, we hope that one day Malaysia standard we're able to set the property, uh, the Malaysia standard for populist. This is a reference that we use on this. Uh, we two country they use Malawian and China standard, which they the research shown that the, they have set the standard, the China standard and Malawi standard. The moisture content must be less than six percent, ash less than ten percent. Raising less than 50% and wax content less than 30%. Heavy metal free, micro content also must be meeting the standard. And raw populis, based on raw populis, they say grade A, grade B. When you, you harvest the raw populis, you do the test whether you content, uh, what is the coconut content. Very, very important. And after extraction for China, China, they have come up with the after extraction, they are using ethanol extraction method, not SFE. Yeah? So they, they found that this, uh, if grade A, they must be more than 20 gram per 100 gram. That means 20% of uh, fovonoid content. And grade B will be 17%. And the oxi oxidation time is less than 22 seconds. Talk about fovonoid content. What is the our finding, uh, our finding on our this uh, Malaysia golden uh, populace, Belulut populace? We found that we're able to get as high as the formonoid content extract, the pure extract can be as high as more than 40 gram per 100 gram. That means 40%. So of course, it's very much on the plant selection and the raising that we collected. And the freshness is also very, very important. And what type of plant that we collect the raisin for. So we have very high quality uh, raisin in Malaysia, uh, populist raisin in Malaysia. So this is the analysis that we run using, using HPLC. We can find that this uh, Malaysia Kalulu Golden Populis, it contains Q-certain, ceramic acid, camphor, okay, and then this, uh, I mean, acid. Okay, and many, many more. This type of uh, compound available, the active compound available inside Kalulu Populis. Heavy metal free, we have tested so using the in, independent lab, SGS tested, there is no, no uh, heavy metal because the key thing, because we are using the SFE extractions and the absence of micro inside the popo extracted populace. So uh, we also do a lot of comparison to the market, uh, populist uh, content it is on finished products and we are, Kululut populis will have higher fovonoid content compared with many more in the markets, many other brands in the markets. And one of the simple way for a layman to test that you, you can use the uh, just a water. If they say the populis extractor, they contain a lot of uh, impurity. When you put inside the water, you see that a lot, a lot of impurity is going to stuck on your spatula. So this Again, our Kalulut Golden Populis is residue free. And we have won many awards. Our company, we are ISO 22000 and HACCP. For Populis manufacturer, the requirement is minimum you need to have a GMP standard. Okay, we got more, uh, we got much more than that. We have won many gold awards as we share on the video. Okay, how to consume propolis? Propolis, you can consume one to twice a day, follow your body weight, 10 kg per drop. Okay, and this is our contact. You feel to contact us and you can drop if you want the research paper, you want to know more about quality or uh, selection on these uh, propolis. There is many propolis inside the market. The Another thing that's very, very important, you have to be carefully select the good populace for consumption especially okay so any question you can ask uh, later i pass back to our mc control okay hi madam hi. Okay. 
Hi, okay. So thank you, Madam, for the enlightening and enriching uh, sharing session. Your insights into the propolis extraction and the quality of the product have undoubtedly provided a very valuable knowledge uh, for the audience. Okay, so I believe this presents a very wonderful opportunity for the, our audience to delve into this subject more further. So with great pleasure, I introduce myself as Dr. Zuhairi Daha, and I'm honoured uh, to be your moderator for this uh, Q&A session. So, uh, if uh, all uh, Adrian, uh wish to share your thoughts uh, and comments uh, in our IBD Facebook, the session is now open and welcome. So, uh, without any delay, first we try to look uh, into our first question uh, from uh, Ms. Suryani Shahid. Okay, so I read first. Hi, Madam. Uh, I want to have your opinion in the context of urban and areas. How does the stingless beekeeping contribute to the enhancement of biodiversity and ecological health? Okay, thank you. Okay, how does the stingless bee beekeeping contribute to enhance the biodiversity and ecology health? Okay, in terms of at the urban area, in actual, I would say that it's not very suitable for beekeeping. Oh, okay. But unless, unless, unless the area is uh, got enough food to supply, to the uh, bee, to the stingless bee, and in terms of enhance the biodiversity, definitely yes, it do, and uh, the ecology of the environment and also help overall. Okay, so urban area, I would say, if for me, I would collect, I would take the populace from rural area. Okay, because, because in terms of the quality, in terms of quality, you're talking about urban area, maybe. We are a bit polluted in terms of uh, we have a lot of uh, vehicles move around and you may find content higher in the the uh, populace. Even even honey, that is the thing that we find. Okay, so you mean this is not suitable to, uh, for the beekeeper at the uh, what house house uh, in the our household and uh, taman perumahan is not suitable for the beekeeper. In actual, for stingless bee, if we are talking about the kawasan perumahan, they mean the housing area. You know the housing area, you get drainage system, everything. Yeah. And the bee will go after water. When they don't have good water, they go for anything. Mm. So this is my concern. A lot of people keep stingless bee at the uh, beside their house. Yeah. I, I also keep some bee at my house, but I never take their honey. Okay. So okay. to be very frank, uh, just direct answer on this question. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, from the unpolluted area. Okay. Okay. So uh, I would like to read uh, another question. Okay, from Mr. Amirul. So good morning. One question: Could you elaborate on the specific extraction factors that influence on the quality of the extracted propolis? Okay, the extraction factor, extraction I mean extraction method, right? Yes, Just maybe. Now we share there is a basically five method that mm. commonly used in the market. Yes. In the market, which uh, I think ultrasound. There are a lot. Uh, some people are using ultrasound. Okay, ultrasound and microwave and water extract. Okay, basically these uh, few method they apply heat. When you apply heat. Yeah. You're going to impact the flavonoid content. We did an experiment, in-house experiment. We try to um, this apply heat, 45 degrees. Uh, once is uh, normally we control the heat below 40. This is a supercritical fruit extraction. We have to control below 40, so to get the uh, higher active compound. And we did experiment try to increase the temperature to 45 degrees. Just 5 degrees increase. Right. We found that the, uh, the active compound, flavonoid content, we just, we just said 100 before we heat up. After we use the 5 degree higher, we found it become 5%. That means 95% gone. So this extraction method, that means the heat do give a, a very high impact to the quality of the propolis. So mm. that's why I mean, SFE extraction is still one of, I would say, the best extraction method, which we, we compare with alcohol extract, 
which they just soak the propolis resin inside the alcohol and they may stir it for hours or for days. And after they filter it and even they evaporate the alcohol. But the thing is, we found just now I shared the last photo when they produce to make to the edible propolis, it contain a lot of uh, impurity, very high wax content, which this alcohol extraction are unable to do it to the wax and okay. to, to remove the uh, residue. So I feel uh, SFP extraction is a very expensive technology, but it's the best. We're able to get golden color propolis compared with other methods. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we. Okay. So thank you, Madam, for your uh, explanation about the extraction factors uh, from your uh, what industry experience, right? Okay. So yes. we go through to the next uh, question. Okay, from uh, Miss Ida. Hello, Madam. Your insights into the propolis extraction have been truly enlightening. So, in the context of beekeeping, could you elaborate on how beekeepers can encourage stingless bees to produce propolis? And what practice that should adopt to ensure the sustainability of both the bees and the propolis production process? Okay. How hmm. beekeeper to encourage uh. the single bee to produce uh, How to call the bees to produce the propolis? Propolis is their, I would say, kita makan nasi dengan sayur. So we have to eat every day. Eh? So they have to collect uh, propolis every day. Mm. Well, how are we going to encourage that? Actually, if uh, for the stingless bee, uh, uh, this midi, uh, midi culture, midi poly culture, so that mean the beekeeping of stingless bee, you will, when every time you harvest the, uh, harvest the honey, they will change the cover, the, the cover, uh, the, the uh, uh, transparent sheet, right? They will change mm. the cover, which they contain a lot of propolis. When you remove it, the bee will put back. So you, you were saying if you want to encourage them to collect propolis, actually, I would say that we give the environment. If they say you put in the environment that contain very, uh, the, the plants raising with very high uh, ant antibacterial property like mangosteen. I, I would say mangosteen is a fruit plant that very easy we're able to find that in uh, Malaysia. In Malaysia. So you do we do we need to encourage them to produce more propolis? I would say that if you want to encourage them, you uh, remove the 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 cover and then you put back. But for stingless bee propolis, you cannot harvest too frequent because for the first one week, probably what they carry back, what they put on on the the propolis is you think is propolis, but it's mostly mostly is wax. Ooh. The only you take the first week is moldy is back. I've done experiments and we found that it's mostly is back, no propolis. But you would take some time for them to put in propolis. Normally they will cover the holes. If they say you remove the propolis or any resin from the high, first thing the bee, the fastest way to produce is wax to cover the hole first. Then the, then after that, they will go and quickly go and find the racing that able to protect the hive. Mm -hmm. So the thing that based on our experience, if you harvest the 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 wax, uh, the propolis you thought is propolis resin every two weeks, which we experiment before, actually the propolis content is very very low. Mm -hmm. So normally at the end, and then the bee, the stingless bee, you cannot keep on take their propolis. They were they were found that they, they found that they are being attacked and they are not happy with the environment and they will go away. So normally we would just uh, take the propolis when we harvest the honey. That mm. will be the best way to encourage them to build up the propolis to protect the hive. So people, we have to summer summer that work together with the bee. We cannot be too tama to always take the propolis. When you always take the propolis, they will not happy environment they will go to. So that is the practice that very, very important. So sustainable, you need to sustain the bee and also the, the populist production. So you need to take care of the bee and you need to provide the environment. You know that these stingless bee, they cannot fly very far. 
So the environment is very, very important. They will go after raisin if they... Uh, and some bee, if they say we are talking about many species, uh, normally in Malaysia, people keep itama, which they easy to adapt to environment. Even if they say they are better uh, populist produce species will be uh, Genio uh, trigona thoracica. This species uh, produce a lot of uh, a lot of populis. Another one, a can caniphon. Caniphon also produce a lot of populis. These two species produce more, but they need more stringent environment, which able to produce uh, to give them enough raising for them to survive. So this is my sharing. Okay, so uh, Madam, uh, is it any, uh, okay, this uh, question, uh, so good morning, Miss Katie Tan from uh, Miss Lilina, it's actually same with my question, thank you so much for sharing, is it any different group plantation, we get a different profile of active compounds of stingless bees, or maybe uh, different group plantation also have different uh, species of stingless bees? Ah, different you. different Kaluluk plantation will get different profile active compound. Yes, mm -hmm. that means the environment, the plant, the surrounding that you 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 uh, keep your Kaluluk uh, Kaluluk B, it will impact the active compound in the populace. Okay, so also the species different, right, madam? The species, species take different. Yes. Uh, based on our research and many, many research we have done in-house mm -hmm. on different species of uh, Kululut, mm -hmm. that is a big difference, even though you put the same area. Because this is species of the Kululut, different species, they got their own favor of raisin. Okay. So it, you want to have good populace, you give them good environment. Or maybe you can select certain plants that... You can, if you have the area that very suitable to keep uh, Kululut B, then you need to grow some plant that's uh, suitable to provide the raisin for the bee. Okay. Yes. Okay, so maybe uh, as we continue, I wish to extend uh, another question. Okay, from, uh, okay, uh, Ms. Nur Hasmaliana, okay, Dr. Hasmaliana actually. Okay, dear Mrs. Katie Tan, thank you for sharing your very interesting findings. So first, how the different extraction process method will affect the propolis properties and what are the advantages of using the SFA method? Because as I understand, the method is quite expensive uh, for the large explication, Adam. Yes, SFE is expensive. We spend overall, I think, about a million on these SFE extraction uh, productions. So how the different of extraction process that uh, impact uh, give the effect on the populist property. Yes, we have before, I think we collaborate with UTM, before we select using SFE uh, method, I mean with uh, Dr. Johairi, Dr. Yen, and Dr. Azizi, we have uh, analyzed many type of method, included, I think, ultrasound, water, uh, sock crack, uh, a lot of method, and we found the best property we able to get from SFE. Of course, if you think you want to get using the cheaper method, you can use alcohol. Alcohol is a very, very common, the soaking method. But again, uh, just now I share is, you may have a lot of impurity. You have very high wax content, a lot of impurity, which you are unable to remove. You are unable to remove uh, using just alcohol extraction. Mm -hmm. That is the, the, the different process. You're going to give different quality on populist uh, properties. This is just done. Uh, we spent, uh, Dr. Zohairi, we're able to share a bit. Uh, we have uh, spent yes. total five years to complete the whole project. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. This is sharing. okay. Thank you, Madam. Okay. So, uh, okay. Next question from Mr. Him, Him Aim. Okay. So for the SFE extraction, are you using CO2 only or mixed with the polar solvents such as ethanol? Since the flavonoid is uh, generally a polar compound. Okay. If yes, how many percent solvent you use since you just mentioned regarding the halal issue for the alcohol solvent? Okay. Uh, yes, very good question yes. from Him, Him M. Okay. Okay. We do use core solvent. 
coal solvent, which is food grade ethanol, to pull out the flavonoid content, the polar compound from uh, this propolis uh, resin. Okay, so of course, how many percent you use? This is under trade secret. Eh? Okay, so this trade secret together with UTM. Yes. Okay, but you can talk to me uh, privately. Okay, so it's uh, talking about finished products. If you're talking about a solvent uh, on the finished product, for the Hala Standard Malaysia, any, uh, any added alcohol content or in the process, or we call it in process, it, this alcohol must be less than 0.5%. Based on our finished product, is 100% less than even 0.3%. It's very, 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 very minimum. We remove the alcohol after the uh, the extraction process. And the most important, SFP giving you the purity of the, uh, the propolis, very, very pure, wax-free. We have tested this uh, wax-free and then alcohol-free as well. No residual impurity inside the extract before mm. we do formulation. Yes. Okay. Don't need to worry, all is hala. Yes, yes, madam. So maybe we can uh, go through to the end. Okay, maybe I think this is the last question uh, because uh, we have constant time. So from uh, Miss Farah. Okay, hi, madam. Thank you for your sharing. As the propolis rich in the flavonoid content that are water soluble. Uh, okay, I think the same question uh, like Fahim. And we know that SFE is usually opaque for the non-polar compound. How can it be suitable to extract this propolis? I think uh, this is the same question, right, madam? Same question, yes. He is, okay. uh, he said he is uh, water rich. Uh, okay. We know the SFE operation non Non polar. Uh, the same question. Actually, we we use a uh, coal solvent mm -hmm. to pull yeah. out all the polar compound. Okay. All right. Okay. So okay, I think this is the last question. So, madam, please accept my sincere appreciation. Okay, for investing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Valuable you. times in sharing your expertise during this IBD webinar. So I'm very optimistic that this session has provided a very clear understanding of the propolis and its potential uh, collaboration. Okay, maybe we can have uh, a next collaboration with the IBD and also the IBDM uh, entity. So for yes. those activated by the products, I encourage you to reach out to the ECOBI Facebook page, right? And yes. also the ECOBI official website. And uh, also I would like to wrap up uh, and conclude this session. So uh, a big thank you to all the participants. And also I would like to forward uh, look forward to the uh, next the IBD webinar. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. I will see you again. Right. Looking forward for the uh, more collaboration with UTM and IBD. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um...